Hi there, in this session we're going to be taking a look at all of the features offered within the Gantt chart in Mission Control. The Gantt chart visualises the entire project. It shows you the project, the milestones, the actions, any milestone deadlines, as well as any checklist items that might exist underneath each action. So it's feature rich in that you can, you can drag and drop individual actions or a group of actions by, by, through the milestone. You can reschedule them or you can extend the duration by moving the individual start and end dates. You also have the ability to add, edit and remove any milestone action or checklist item directly from the Gantt chart. You're able to quickly drag and drop to create dependencies between actions and you're also able to view the baseline dates, allowing you to do an actual versus uh, baseline comparison. As well as that, you're able to export the, uh, the, the Gantt chart as an XML file that can be imported into MS Project. And you can also export it as a PDF should you be wanting to share it with, uh, with a client, for example. So let's jump in and take a look at the Gantt chart in action. So there's a number of ways we can use the Gantt chart in Mission Control. One way is to use it at an individual project level where we can access the Gantt chart as part of the project overview page. Alternatively, we can use the standalone Gantt chart and the benefit of that one is it allows us to pull in multiple projects onto the one Gantt chart and we can see how they're all scheduled in comparison to one another. So first of all, we're gonna take a look at the individual project. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the management pad, select my project from the list and click through to access my project overview page. So next I'm going to click on the Gantt chart tab. Now what that shows me is my overall Gantt chart filtered for this one project. So I can see the purple line is my project, my blue lines are my milestones and the green are the individual actions. Now what it allows me to do is reschedule individual actions by simply dragging and dropping uh, wherever I need them to be. I could pick up an entire milestone and reschedule all of the actions within that milestone. And I also have the ability to extend the duration of an action as well. So if I need to just uh, extend this by another day, I can just drag that out and extend it as so. So another feature is I'm able to actually add dep create dependencies between the actions. So for example, if design UI is dependent on the design wireframes, what I can do is just from the right hand side of the design wireframes is drag and drop to the left hand side of design UI and that will create a dependency between those two actions. So if I just carry on and create a few more dependencies on this project between these actions. So now that I've done that, if I reschedule the parent, you'll notice that every single action that is dependent on it will automatically be rescheduled by the same period of time. So it certainly makes rescheduling projects a lot easier. What I'm also able to do is edit the detail of a particular action. So if I need to make some changes to some key fields, I can just double click onto the action. That will open up uh, this page here. So I'm able to, for example, change the owner. I could jump through to the resource assignment wizard if I need to. If I mark it as a high priority item, you'll see when we go back to the uh, Gantt chart, it's been flagged up as red uh, to give us that visual indicator that it's an important action. I also have the ability to edit the milestone as well. So if I double click into that, you can see I can, uh, I can set things like the, the, the budget for delivering this particular milestone. I could be setting the, um, the overall um, deadline for when this work needs to be done. So I'm gonna say here that everything in the design milestone needs to be done by the 15th of September. And I'm gonna set this person to be the, the owner. So save that. So I can make a number of changes as I'm, as I'm going through. Now what I can also do is add new records as well. So just by clicking the plus sign. So for example, if I click the plus sign at the project level, that's gonna allow me to add a new milestone. If I click the plus sign at the milestone level, it will allow me to add a new action within that milestone. So in this example, I'm gonna be adding in a new action that will allow me to um, get some client approval for these designs. So simply click on the plus sign. Again, that opens up. I can put in the new details. And you can see that's been added on there now. So if I save the Gantt chart and we'll just be able to see, see those changes that have been made. 
So what we've got now is obviously all, all of our dependencies that are in place. We've also got our milestone deadline, and I've also got my extra action that I've added on as well. So a few other things to be aware of. Uh, obviously, we have our non-working uh, day feature within Mission Control. So, for example, if I try to reschedule that action uh, to uh, be scheduled on to Saturday, what the Gantt chart will do in the background is say, well, we don't work on weekends. So what it will do is automatically reschedule it to the next available working day, which might be the Monday. Now, taking that one step further, what it will do is actually go away and check to see if this resource is actually on holiday that day. And if they are, they would automatically reschedule it to the next available working day. Now, a few other things that you can do uh, from the Gantt chart. So over here, you'll see uh, we're looking at the, the data table section where we can see some key fields. Now, if I don't want to uh, feature that data table there, I can just collapse it just by uh, clicking this, uh, this button here. So I'm now just looking at the Gantt chart without that data table. If I want to bring it back, just simply click the button again. Now, Taking that one step further, I might want to look at some fields, but not all of them. So I have the ability to pick and choose which of those fields I want to uh, want to display. So for example, I might not want to show the, uh, the work days. So if I update that now, you can see that the work days column has been removed. If I want to add it back in, it's just a case of ticking the box and updating again. A few other things here, I'm able to um, zoom in and out just by clicking these buttons. A few other buttons here that we've got are the, the baselines. So for example, if I happen to reschedule a few actions here, so what I'll do first of all is just um, add an extra week to the end of the timeline and I'll say, okay, well, this action is going to get delayed uh, a few days and it's going to result in uh, the uh, preparing of the training materials to happen on Tuesday and then the training is going to happen on Wednesday. So obviously I've made a few changes from what my original schedule was. So I'm going to click on save and commit those to the project. So now that that's been done, what I can actually do is load in my baseline date. So if I toggle that one on. So this gives me that ghosted version of the original timeline. So as I'm scrolling down, you can see that these, these few actions, they stayed on track. But then when I get down to the build framework, uh, build page content, you can see that I had to delay that by a few days. And then that resulted in these actions also being delayed. So that allows us to perform that, that lessons learned process at the end of the project to see how well we, we delivered against how we thought we were going to deliver. Now, another feature is you're able to uh, load in the checklist items. So obviously what I'm looking at here at the moment is the project, the milestone, and the actions. If I load in the checklists, what that will do is add that fourth layer of information. So I've now got my, my three checklist items that are sitting underneath my design wireframes action, and I can see the detail here. Now, again, if I need to add more, what I can do is just click on the plus sign at the action level, and that will allow me to load in a new checklist item. So save that, and that will add that extra checklist to that action. Now, if I'm wanting to look at just the overall project, um, I can uh, and, and not all of the detail. What I can do is click on this uh, this icon, and that will allow me to collapse everything else beneath it. Now, not too helpful on the individual project, but what we can do is actually go off to the standalone Gantt chart, and we'll be able to quickly collapse uh, all of the all of the detail. Just before we do that, just to highlight a couple of other things. So if I uh, if I want to export my project as an XML file that could be imported into MS project. I can I can do that via this button. And the uh, the PDF export allows me to generate uh, a PDF of the uh, of the Gantt chart. So simply click the box. Now that's generated that as a PDF that can be sent off to my customer. Uh, it's obviously brandable, so you can put your logo up here. You can even put your client logo up there as well. But now that's a PDF that I can save locally and distribute to anyone that needs access to it. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, back to the console, and we'll go back to the back to the management pad, and we're going to access the, uh, the the standalone Gantt chart. 
So a couple of extra buttons I'll draw your attention to here. I've, I've got the ability to filter uh, what I'm looking at here. So if I scroll down right now, you can see that I'm looking at two separate projects. So I've got the Anugo website build and the Aprika website build. And I can see the timeline for each one of those. Now, all of the other features, being able to drag and drop and create dependencies and edit and add new, all of that exists here as well. The benefit being I can look at multiple projects. So again, if I want to collapse the detail, I can quickly click the button and that just collapses everything there. Expand it again, simply click the button again. So if I want to change the filters, I can uh, click on the filter box and I can choose from a number of different options. So right now I'm looking at project name and I can go down the list and, and select all of the different projects that I might be interested in, in looking at. So by doing that, loading those projects in, that's going to add some additional projects onto my Gantt chart. So now if I scroll down, you'll see I've got a longer list of projects that I'm interested in looking at. Alternatively, if I want to um, look at uh, fil filter on a different criteria, I can choose from any, any option here. So I could be filtering on category. If I want to look at all, all projects that are running for a particular account, I could simply select them from the list there. So number of different options here. And again, the benefit is I'm able to export that as an entire PDF as well. So final thing, uh, obviously you can see here how the, uh, the, this, uh, the width of each column has been cut off and some of, the, some of the content can't be read. Now I have the ability to adjust these just by dragging and dropping and that will be a persistent setting for me now. So that will remember that that's the width of the column that I would like to, to view the Gantt chart at. One final thing, if we're looking to delete information, so for example, if I want to delete a dependency, so if we go back down to our Aprika project, so let's say I want to actually remove a dependency, I can just hover over and double click, and that will allow me to delete that. So likewise, if I need to delete an action, I can, I can do that here as well. So just double click and then delete the action straight from the, from the Gantt chart. So once I'm once I'm uh, finished, uh, I get my I obviously get my icon there, just letting me know that I've got unsaved records. So once uh, before I move away from the Gantt chart, I just need to click save, and that will commit all of those changes for me.